Uh, moving on now, dietitians are noticing an alarming trend as the pandemic continues to rage on, an increase in children with prediabetes. So what's causing the increase? Danielle Domingo, dietitian with Akron Children's Hospital, joining us live now to talk about it. Danielle, first of all, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. I'm here at the Diabetes Center here at Akron Children's where I see patients five days a week in the center. All right, talk about this increase we're seeing with, with kids uh, with prediabetes. Uh, why is it happening? What do you attribute it to? We are seeing a dramatic increase in the number of children um, with prediabetes and even type 2 diabetes. Uh, we are attributing this to a more sedentary um, lifestyle since COVID is kind of taking hold of our lives right now. So we're more sedentary, school is virtual, and we have more access to food all day long. Well, let's let's talk about you know some of the things that, that you can do to, to prevent it, because you know the, the, we've fallen into some very interesting uh, habits right now. So, what are some things that, that that the kids can do and the parents can do to try to prevent this and ease the problem? Yeah, the good thing with prediabetes is that while diet and lifestyle are contributing factors mm -hmm. um, for prediabetes and then having it move into type two diabetes, it also is the solution. So diet and lifestyle are the solution. Number one, let's protect the home. So we can't always control what um, other other families and other households are bringing into their home, but we can control the foods that we're bringing into our home. We want to make sure that we're bringing in whole grains, fruits and vegetables, a lean protein source, mm -hmm. and healthy snacks as well. We want to stick to zero sugary drinks. If you see here, even though a juice has 100% apple juice, we're getting about six teaspoons of sugar just from that juice that we're wow. drinking, meaning one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Okay. This increase in sugar alone, just in our beverages, is causing a great spike in our blood sugars, which is leading to all this insulin resistance and issues with being able to control our blood sugars. So we want to make sure that we're eliminating all sugary drinks in the home. Mm. We want to make sure that we are pairing our peas. So when we want to offer our children snacks, we want to make sure that we are providing them with a produce and a protein. So I like that phrase, pair your peas, because I think it's easy to remember. Um, so here are some examples here. Grape and a string cheese. So a fresh fruit and a protein, a banana and some peanut butter. Mm -hmm. So we have a fruit and a protein. Even celery and peanut butter would be an appropriate snack. <laughs> Minimizing the amount of crackers and cookies that we're bringing into the house and okay. more so protein and produce. All right. We so also want to make sure... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. We also want to make sure that when we're looking at our plate, specifically for lunch and dinner, that most of our plate is made up of non-starchy vegetables mm. and a lean protein source. Right. So we want to make sure that we are eating mostly non-starchy vegetables, a protein source, and a small section for our grains. Wow. Seems like diet is the main thing. We just got to change some habits as far as our, our young people and what they eat, especially right now during the pandemic when they're at home and their appetites are yes. sometimes, you know, exactly. they, I want something to eat kind of thing. We want to make sure that we're moving. So we want to find ways in time throughout the day that we can get moving as a family. Yes. The goal is 150 minutes a week, but you can make it fun. It can be a family event. All right, Danielle Domingo with the Akron Children's Hospital. Thank you so much for, for the good information for us this morning. Appreciate you. Thank you. All right.